All right, this week we're talking about diseases of the vineyard, so I thought I would come out and show you some scary things going on in this vineyard. We, um, we're in the Negro Amaro Vineyard on Yavapai College campus. We have Pierce's disease, and it's uh, somewhat new to Arizona. They've had it down in southeastern Arizona for a while, but uh, it's kind of new to the Verde Valley. Pierce's disease is a little bit scary. They've had horrible, horrible problems with it in California, Texas, uh, other locations. So let me show you what we're seeing here in the vineyard and give you a visual and show you some of the results of the testing that I was able to uh, complete. Okay, so what I did was I tested individual vines by doing leaf samples. What I've done to mark those vines is put an orange flag. I tested rows 5, 15, and 25. They're all marked with an orange flag. And then I tested every other vine. The test is uh, cumbersome and it's kind of uh, an expensive test. And so we did the odd number vines. So number one, this is vine number one, starting from the end closest to the uh, racquetball court. And so that would kind of be north. The north end and these rows are running north to south. So vine number one tested at 0.18. The threshold level that we determined is 0.25. So anything infected higher than 0.25 is an infected vine. So this vine is okay. We didn't test vine two, but we tested vine three. Vine three came in at 0.21. So that's a healthy vine. Four wasn't tested. Okay, here's vine number five. And so I've flagged number five with an orange tape. This is an infected vine. This uh, reading came in at 0 0.40. So this is uh, getting close to double the level of infection. However, 0 0.40 isn't an extremely high number. So this is uh, somewhat young infection on this vine. And so what we're looking for, for Pierce's disease is uneven lignification. And so as you start looking at these stems, um, later on into the year, the tips won't lignify the petioles will remain when the leaves drop. And um, if we had fruit on this vine, you would see the fruit starting to shrivel, starting to raisin. And then the classic Pierce's disease leaf, um, this probably isn't a good example because it's starting to shred and dry up, but I'll show you some pictures of the classic look to Pierce's disease. But this is an infected vine. This vine's gotta come out because Pierce's disease is a uh, infection that's spread by insects and then it spread from vine to vine. And so of all the vines that I tested, we have um, just a handful that were infected. And so we gotta get a handle on this problem. So you need to get a handle on what is spreading the Pierce's disease. We have these uh, yellow sticky cards placed out and uh, these sticky cards are uh, extremely sticky. Any insects moving through the vineyard would be uh, stuck to them. And then you can determine uh, threshold levels for um, the insect and what type of damage that it does. Um, Pierce's disease is typically spread by sharpshooters and all the research that you'll find on the internet, a lot of it's the glassy wing sharpshooter. Uh, in our area, it's still being determined which insects are spreading um, the disease. Any insect that is uh, feeding from the xylem layer in the uh, tissue has the potential to spread Pierce's disease. So in our area, that can be leaf hoppers, that can be sharpshooters, that can even be spittle bugs, and then some uh, is being determined which other insects. And so as I look at the sticky card, I see just some, some small flies, some mosquitoes, and um, a little bit of fungus gnats on this card, nothing scary. Of all the monitoring I've done this summer, I've only collected uh, three sharpshooters, and so obviously the, the vector, the insect that's spreading it, um, is either not present right now, or it was present earlier in the spring, and we weren't able to uh, collect it and determine what it was. Once you have Pierce's disease in your vineyard, and you know that you have it, once you uh, start looking for your vector, 
uh, the, the next thing to do would be to get some insecticide down because it's uh, spread by insects. And so there's a way that you can put a systemic insecticide which moves throughout the plant. You can put that systemic insecticide down at the soil level. It's recommended you do that between bud burst and fruit development stage when the vine is young. And so you actually put that into the soil or through the drip system, you water it in, the vine takes it up, and then there's the insecticide throughout the vine. Um, some of you may be wondering, well, doesn't that affect uh, grape quality? Well, there's products out there that uh, are determined to be safe. I'll let you guys make your own uh, judgment on that, but that is the next step. It's typically an imidacloprid. Imidacloprid is the type of insecticide that's uh, put down into the vine and, and moved up systemically. That's typically the next best uh, technique. Also keeping the uh, area surrounding the vineyard, the shrubs, the weeds, you can notice this is pretty weedy now, that can also harbor insects that are spreading from, uh, from the other vegetation to the vine because also Pierce's disease, it is believed, can move through other e existing vegetation that is infected through the vine through your vector insect. But the key is you got to have the, the insect vector there. When uh, looking at your vines and starting to look at disease issues, it's also good to know what climatic factors could cause uh, problems in your vines. This is again the Negro Amaro Vineyard on Yavapai College's campus, and this site experienced a very uh, rare and unique hailstorm in the middle of August. I believe it was August 18th. And so these vines, the cordons were just starting to harden off, and so when the hail hit the cordons, you see these lesions anywhere where the uh, cordon was exposed, you, you see these lesions. And also on these lateral arms, you can see um, pretty distinct open, these open sores. And this might look like other diseases that you have in the vineyard, these open uh, lesions. Here's some more, and it's always on the tops and it's always uh, the, the part of the vine that's most uh, susceptible to the hail coming from above or at an angle. And so that's distinct to see. If I look underneath these vines, I don't see the damage at all. It's always on the top. And so something that goes hand in hand with it was all these tattered holes through the leaves. These leaves were just trashed. These leaves were just, uh, hail went through them. Hail tore them, hail ripped the edges off of them. And so I happened to be here and so I saw the hail damage right after. But if you weren't here or you weren't on site, you might start wondering, hey, what's going on with my, with my vines? But hail damage, it's one of those things where you just have to look through it. It's been about uh, almost pushing a month now. And so you see the new growth, the new growth has, has come out and uh, we're starting to look decent again. But when I came to this vineyard, it, it was just horrid. All the, the hail damage that was on those leaves at that time. So you just gotta start piecing through the potentials and the monsoon in Arizona uh, definitely can lead to some hail damage on your, on your crop. These vines will recover. Some of the worst uh, laterals might have to come off, but they'll, they'll also typically heal up and luckily some of the cordons were hardened off enough. The younger cordons are the ones that really got um, destroyed. Here's a younger cordon, and you can see the lesions at each spot, really, really torn up and bad. So we'll see what happens.